Hello, I'm Will Holland. This unit's called Understanding the Television and Film Industry. Hopefully by the end of this podcast you'll understand more about the television and film industry. There are seven big six media conglomerates in the world. I'll be talking about one. Uh, the one that I'll be talking about is probably the most successful and most powerful uh, media conglomerate there is today, and that film and that uh, media conglomerate is called Walt Disney. Hello, my name is Sam Luttall, and we'll also be talking about the biggest media conglomerates in the world, Walt Disney. But we will also be talking about the BBC and the debate about how the TV licence is distributed and some of the debates revolving around the BBC and the TV licence. Walt Disney have made many films over the history of time. Here's a list of some of the films that they've made. So we've got Toy Story 3, The Sixth Sense, Anion Nemo, Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man Chess. But the most successful film at the box office from Walt Disney was The Avengers, which gained a total gross of $623 million. Walt Disney's competitors include the of Century Fox because they have both created films that are very similar to each other. For example, when Walt Disney created the release of The Avengers, then 20th Century Fox released X-Men and I think these films are very similar because they both uh, relate to superheroes and fighting crime. Walt Disney is a conglomerate because it owns several different companies. So they are vertically uh, a vertical integration and also horizontal. Horizontal means where they could own like the music to all the films, so like the music, the Disney music logo, and uh, so that makes them horizontal. But they're also vertical as well because they have their own distribution, ex- exhibition, and production line. So that makes them both vertical and horizontally integrated. Uh, they own other things such as ESPN, so they could show some of the things on there. But probably one of the most like famous things to show things on would probably be uh, Disney Channel or something like that where that's where they could exhibit it and they also have Disney Studios where they could record the things uh, but they could also advertise on ESPN so that makes them horizontal as well. The conglomerate that is Disney is one of the most successful conglomerates there is and on last year's revenue they made an incredible 48 billion and in my opinion that makes them very very successful. There are many debates about certain if not all conglomerates own too much of the media. For example, he said that the seven big film companies own 90 to 95% of all the media in the US. Even Walt Disney owns a massive part of that 90 to 95% of the companies. In my opinion, I think it's okay to own a lot of the companies because it cuts out the middleman in a way so they can produce it, exhibit it and distribute it. That way taking up all the money uh, and all the money goes back to Walt Disney. But I think it can be a little bit unfair to some of the smaller film companies because it's hard for them to make it because all the big film companies will buy them or something like that. I think it's good for now, but in the future there will be some implications and consequences for the seven big film companies. Maybe something will go wrong and some, some of the bigger film companies will start to go out of business and they will disappear, like film companies such as MGM. Over the years there have been many technological advances in the film industry. At the start of the film industry, over a hundred years ago, they were black and white with no sound or no dialogue. If you do this nowadays, filmmakers are considered artists or auteurs, and some of the, pe- some of the people it is very strange. So this, is ju- this just proves how much of a massive leap uh, the film industry has gone in technological aspects. Even from the 80s, uh, the special effects were very limited and now look very dated. Whereas The Poltergeist was scary in 1982, it was considered funny, and when I watched it, I compared it to Ghostbusters, in my opinion anyway. And even animated films today look very realistic, pretty much like the real people. So even special effects have improved from the start, from using stop motion to now using CGI, making the audience feel like it's actually real and it's actually happened. From filmmakers using 35mm film reels, uh, to filming now on digital cameras. Making films has never been easy to do. And you, you can even edit at home uh, if you really wanted to, and you could make a film in a matter of months instead of years now. I still believe that there's room for improvement though. One of the, one of the things that I think is a big time waster is the editing process, because it takes up a lot of time. I think it'd be great to, if you could edit on set. And you can do this with TV shows, but I think it'd be done well if you could do it with films as well. Yeah, I think it'll happen in a few years anyway. Also, even now CGI is getting even better, so soon I reckon it'll look really real. Not even like it does now, it'll look even better than now. Some of it even looks real now, so I don't know how they're going to have to do it, but I can just see it happening now. The BBC is a public service broadcaster, and this means that everything they put out 
it's put on there in the public's best interest and they put things on that they think the people who watch the BBC would like. And the reason they do this is because they are a publicly funded channel and this means that the BBC get their money from the public so they do not have to have adverts in the middle of their show because they do not need to and it is in the best interest to put things on that people would watch and people would not want to pay and the BBC would have to go commercial. The BBC is funded through the public paying for licence fees and people have to pay for this every year and for a coloured TV it will cost you £145.50 for the whole year but if you have a black and white TV then you still have to pay but it will only cost you £49 for the whole year. And as you can see the BBC spent £2.4 million on TV last year and £1.3 million of it went on the BBC's main channel BBC One but they also spent a massive £640 million on their radio stations and the majority of this money went on to a local radio but they still spent 186 million online for example BBC iPlayer. The BBC is established under a royal charter and what they do is they set out the BBC's public response and what they are aiming to do and they release a show and how the public reacts to the new show and under the royal charter there is a BBC trust they work closely with the national audience councils and look for concerns to find out what audience wants to see and what they do not want to see on the TV. And they are able to give the BBC strategic direction on what the audience wants to see. And then the BBC are able to make shows for people and what they want to see. And then the BBC are able to make shows that people want to see so that the audience are not disappointed in the shows that they are watching. Also, the BBC Trust do is they make sure that the money that the BBC gets from licence fees is not wasted all the money that they get and they make sure that all the money they get is being put to good use. In some cases the BBC is very successful because when people hear that they are going to shut down the BBC3 channel and put it all, all its content online some people, could, some people could watch it. People were outraged by the news. More than 271,000 people signed a petition to save the channel and people are trying to make the BBC reconsider the idea of closing BBC3 because it will be the first time in a television channel will have closed for the first time in history of the institution. The BBC are worried that people will stop paying for their TV licence and that it won't be a legal requirement for someone to pay their licence fee. If this happens then the BBC will have to commercially fund it will have to be commercially funded for the first time ever and this could also be bad for the BBC. They might not get the same amount of funding or receive enough money back from the shows. My opinion on this is that it's still, they should still pay for it because the BBC has been around for a very long time without breaks and this is one of the reasons why it attracts so many people. It also makes them unique in, to, other, to all the other shows. Also it could be bad for the BBC because I feel they won't get the right funding. The BBC's competitors are pretty much all the channels on TV, but in particular ITV. ITV have been around since 1955 and the BBC has been around since 1922. Although the BBC have been around, one, around 25 years longer than ITV, it is still a head-to-head -head race who is the best and most success successful channel. Bearing in mind not till quite recently there was only five channels on TV. They were BBC One, BBC Two, ITV One, Channel Four and Channel Five. So as you can see from the, the competition was very close because there weren't many channels around like today. In 2013, Daniel Danker said that the BBC have new rivals now. There are new rivals such as Netflix and other streaming websites. At the same time, the BBC had shown a programme with Ian Richardson in a very similar show came out on Netflix called House of Cards featuring Kevin Spacey. This just shows the power of the internet has over television. It will cost you £145.50 for a year to watch the BBC alone whereas it only costs £71.88 to watch Netflix and they don't just have TV channels, they have many films on demand. BBC brought out iPlayer in 2007. From there on other companies have copied the BBC by making their own TV uh, websites or apps. ITV brought out their own catch-up TV website a year later. Obviously this app or website has been a big impact on today because pretty much every channel has its own catch-up app or, app or website. By the time ITV had brought out their own catch-up app or website, the BBC was putting it on games, consoles and mobile phones, making it more accessible than ever. 
So as you can see, the BBC shaped the on-demand era, really, for TV online because they were really the first company to do it. There were talks about the BBC getting rid of BBC Three on TV and just leaving it on their app or online. This is good and bad. It is good because it is easily accessible and you can watch it wherever you want and whenever you want. And it is bad because not everyone in the UK has an internet connection, for example, older people. Although BBC Three is aimed at younger audience, so it won't really affect some people, but some people like watching TV in their room and now they don't have the BBC Three on television. It is just the same as watching it on a smaller device, such as a laptop or tablet. But I also think that TV will be made, mo made more online, so things like Netflix will get bigger, and soon pretty much everything, every channel will have another channel online, and some channels that exist now will only be online and not on TV anymore.